Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I thought we'd do something different, um, namely a repair video. Um, I've brought home an LED light uh, from work, which doesn't quite work anymore the way it should. Um, this is a PAR56, uh, it's a short black DMX. It takes uh, 100 to 240 volts AC, uh, varying from 47 to 63 hertz, and uh, consumes 150 milliampere, which is 21 watts. Uh, it has a manual mode, an auto mode, uh, sound mode and DMX control and it's in total uh, 151 LEDs, uh, 51 red, 49 green and 51 blue. Um, on the back there is a dip switch which um, controls a few functions of this light. Um, the first one is the manual mode and uh, you have two channels of red two channels of green and two channels of blue and these last four switches they control where it's in auto mode uh, which fades from one color to another color uh, whether it's in sound mode uh, which after you can use this rotary it's actually potentiometer uh, to set the sensitivity of the microphone that's in here and if you want to connect it through DMX you can use uh, DMX in and DMX out uh, and you can also set the DMX address with these dip switches um, let me first show you what is wrong with this light let me plug it in I hope this doesn't swamp the camera out well it's okay um, so it's in manual mode now and uh, using the dip switches on the back I set it to red and if you take a little screwdriver where is it over here you can change it to green which also works fine and you can also set it to blue using number five and number six. And that one, as you can see, doesn't work all that great. This is a common failure with these types of lamps. Let me get a piece of paper and show you why this happens. So inside this lamp, there are a few strings of parallel series LEDs. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, there's a positive voltage and there are, let's say for example this is red, there's also green, and there's also blue and there are a few strings of LEDs all wired in series and well let's draw a few more and if you look on the board it's a round PCB there are numerous of strings of LEDs all wide in series and these of course are then wide in parallel now what happens if one of these LEDs fails in a string let's say this one fails all the LEDs in this string go out um, if that happens on multiple strings you get something we saw earlier that only a few blue LEDs in this case uh, light up. An easy repair is just to fix that LED because um, when it fails, um, when one of the LEDs fail, the other ones are probably fine. It's just they are not making a connection anymore so the whole string goes out. So by replacing just a few LEDs um, we can make this light work again. I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to do that off camera because you know it's bulky on my desk and I'm going to show you the PCB. Now this is the PCB out, it's uh, held together with one of these, uh, what do you call them, Molex connectors, no? I don't know. Um, 
and that just it PCB comes out so over the PCB there's an acrylic cover uh, you just remove that four screws you're done PCB is held down by four screws to the light itself and as you can see they've marked all the LEDs uh, strings of green strings of blue and strings of red now as I said earlier if one of the LEDs in this string fails the whole string fails so a way to identify which LED is still working and which you have to replace is by using a multimeter and I'm gonna set this to diode mode which is over there it's the same as continuity and what I'm gonna do is let me see if I can do this on camera I know that blue LEDs in this middle section are not working anymore so I'm gonna take the first blue LED and check if that's working and let me do this on camera of course and as you can see it kind of lights up um, so that means that LED is, is working um, now I have to check each LED in this whole string of blue LEDs to see which one has failed so now I've marked this one uh, as not working and all I have to do is desolder this LED solder in another blue LED and it should all work again the first thing I'm gonna do is put a decent amount of flux around these solder joints to help reflow them so I can take out the LED well, maybe this can go off I think this will be a bit easier there we go a bit much but it's okay I have to kind of pull it from the other side make sure I'm grabbing the right LED let me just first flow some extra solder into it we go that's that one now I have to clean up these uh, these pads uh, let me get a solder sucker so this one has been used a lot um, a bit burnt hope it still works Try to do the rest with some wick. That looks reasonably clean. Let's get one of these blue LEDs and just make sure the polarity is correct. Um, the positive is routed to the top of the board and then goes down. So the top one, as we look at it from this side, is the anode and the bottom one is the cathode. So that's to flip the board around. So 
So this is kind of a pain to do when uh, you can't get the solder out of the, the holes. So then you have to hold the LED on this side and heat up the pads and push it through. There we go. That's flush to the board. Let's solder up the pads. Well, good enough. Let's trim the leads. And I'm just gonna clean off the excess flux and uh, I'll hook it up and see if this did the trick. So, let's plug it in and see if we made any progress. Oh, kind of swamping out the camera. Um, but yeah, that string of six is uh, working now. Now I have to do all the other ones to check which LEDs are not working anymore and which are still working. Um, I'm going to do that all off camera and I'll come back. So that took a bit longer than I expected. Um, a total of five LEDs had failed. Um, I've replaced them all. Let's connect it. Tilt it a bit and as you can see all the blue lights are lighting up again and now because blue is working again uh, we can make purple wow 